When you think of Sweden, what's the first thing that pops into your head? IKEA, Volvo, the Northern Lights, probably something like that. But most probably not something war related. However, Sweden has produced some pretty neat military tech over the past years. The CV-90, for example, a Swedish infantry fighting vehicle that's also in service in Ukraine. But one of the most impressive developments is the Gripen, which translates to Griffin in English. Fully named Saab JAS-39 Gripen, the Swedish multi-role fighter aircraft has been discussed as maybe the best fit for Ukraine. So, welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week we want to discuss whether the Gripen really is good for Ukraine, and if yes, what the chances are of seeing this aircraft actually defending Ukrainian airspace anytime soon. Why is the Gripen a good fit? There are many reasons. The two most rudimentary are cost-effective operation. The Gripen is renowned for its cost efficiency, a crucial factor for Ukraine, which is confronted with the challenge of having to modernize its military while managing limited resources. An average flight hour with a Gripen of the CD variant costs around 5,800 US dollars. Just to compare, according to Forbes magazine, an F-16 costs around 8,000 US dollars to fly per hour, although some statistics are significantly higher. It depends obviously on the variant and context. A Eurofighter costs around 22,000 US dollars for a flight hour, and F-35 even more. Number two, versatility. Gripen is a true multi-role fighter capable of air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground strikes, reconnaissance, and even electronic warfare. Not only that, Gripen is extremely sturdy. It was specifically built to land and operate from roads or even rough fields during wartime. For a country like Ukraine that has seen its military and civilian infrastructure under attack for years, with airports and runways being an especially favored target of Russia, that's a golden feat. Technical characteristics. The first Gripen were produced in 1997. The Swedish Air Force has around 94 CD variants in service today. There were around 300 built altogether, sold also to the air forces of Hungary, Brazil, South Africa, and the Czech Republic. Right now, the newer Gripen and EF is being developed and soon to be operational with an even greater range and more modern radar and combat systems. But if Ukraine is to receive any of these jets, they will most likely be of the older CD variants. So that's what we're focusing on in the following section when talking about technical specifications. Engine. The Gripen is equipped with a Volvo RM12 engine, a derivative of the General Electric F404. So it's a licensed copy, basically. The engine provides a maximum thrust of around 80.5 kN, enabling high maneuverability and speed while being pretty fuel efficient, giving it a combat radius of approximately 800 km. Size. The Gripen, compact design with a length of around 15 meters and a wingspan of around 8.4 meters, contributes to its agility and reduced radar cross-section, which means it's less detectable and thus has a higher chance of surviving. It weighs around 6,800 kilograms when it's empty. That's almost 1.5 tons less than an F-16. In other words, it's small and light. And although it's 2023 and even the Russians have a lot of high-tech anti-aircraft capabilities, sometimes even a couple of feet in size can make a difference when it comes to hiding, landing, or avoiding a threat. Weapons capabilities. Gripen can boast a wide range of options, including precision-guided air-to-air missiles, air-to-surface, anti-ship, and more. The Gripen can fire beyond visual range air-to-air -air missiles like the Amram, which will be supplied to Ukraine. But it's also compatible with the Meteor, produced by the European manufacturer MDBA. The Meteor has been celebrated as the best beyond visual range air-to-air -air missile in the world. Of course, this kind of bold and exaggerated statement can always be doubted. And there have been doubts that the Meteor is really the best there is. But in the end, whether it's the best or only one of the best, pretty great. And here's why. It has a range of around 100 kilometers and advanced radar-guided technology. However, its most exceptional feature is its propulsion concept. You can imagine the Meteor more as an air-to-air -air cruise missile than as a traditional guided air-to-air -air rocket. For thrust, it burns a solid fuel with a variable flow. Sounds complicated? Well, to construct it and come up with it, yes, yes it is. The result, however, is quite simple. It means that the Meteor can throttle its engine during different phases of flight, so slowing down or up instead of just burning it all after being ignited, making it very versatile. Now, after all these impressive facts and figures, a little realism. What are the actual chances that the Gripit's heading to Ukraine? How many? How long will it take? Well, during his visit in August, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and the Swedish government undermined their strong allegiance and will to cooperate. Also, Ukrainian pilots have undergone orientation training for the Gripen in Sweden. 
Orientation training is basically testing the water, playing around with basics and then evaluating what it would take and how long to really get the show on the road. And that's where the information for us kind of ceases. We don't really know much more, except that there have been multiple reports from Swedish media outlets that the government is debating the delivery of Gripen to Ukraine. All we can do is hope that as many of these planes will be delivered to Ukraine as soon as possible, obviously in coordination with the training of pilots and ground personnel. Anyway, that's it for Talking Tactics this week. Hit like and subscribe. If you want, you can also follow our Telegram channel to always stay up to date with the latest news from Ukraine.